Coco Chanel fairly stated that fashion is architecture. It's a question of proportions. Did you know that these four designers were trained in the architecture profession and at some point on their journey, they transitioned over to the fashion industry? Virgil Abloh and his notorious brand Off-White, Zaha Hadid was known for her futuristic architecture, which then translated quite well over to the fashion industry. Tom Ford studied interior design in his final years of college, and then he finally followed his calling over to Gucci and later his own brand, Tom Ford. And finally, Gianni Versace was a draftsman in his early career. His architectural influences can be seen in the Greek and Roman stylizations, and also the intricate patterns reminiscent of ancient artwork. In architecture, designers try to create something that's not only beautiful, but it serves a specific purpose, something like a home, office, or public space. Similarly, in fashion, designers have to create something that doesn't only look good, but it serves its intended purpose, whether it be casual wear, business attire, or formal wear. Glenn Merkitt is an Australian Pritzker Prize winning architect best known for his ability to create a sense of place with his architecture and pay very close attention to surrounding natural environment and the needs of his clients. The Magni House is one of his most famous homes he has designed. The client's use of the land was mostly from camping, so they wanted a permanent home that reflected the lightness of a tent and responds to the beautiful surrounding landscape and climate. They also, of course, wanted the building to be practical by including two independent spaces, one space for themselves and the other space for their children, family, and friends. Athleisure wear is an example in the fashion industry that is designed very similarly to Glenn Merkitt's Magni House. It's designed to be stylish, comfortable, and capable of withstanding the needs of intense physical activity. It not only has to function inside the gym, but it also must look great and pair well with other pieces outside of the gym. Another connection between architecture and fashion is the importance of materials. In architecture, designers must choose materials that will ensure that the building is structurally sound and allow the building to withstand the climate. In fashion, designers don't only choose materials that look good, but they have to choose materials that feel good on the skin and they can withstand wear and tear. Regardless though, in both industries, the fashion and the architecture profession, they have to choose materials that aren't only sustainable, but they're also eco-friendly. You gotta think about the environmental impact. Architects are constantly testing new materials out. We want the structure to be able to withstand the climate or heavy use by people, which could be the same for clothing materials. This is why metal, concrete, and treated wood are most commonly used. On the fashion side, Workwear is a great example of clothing material that must stand up to harsh conditions, otherwise a person wearing the clothing could be placed in danger. In most recent years, the architecture, engineering, and construction industries have made massive strides to build structures that are more sustainable and eco-friendly. In the 1970s, architects were heavily scrutinized for their extensive deployment of large glass and steel enclosures that required massive heating and cooling systems to keep them occupiable. This, among countless other factors, has developed into the modern day mass awareness of sustainable building practices. One of the most important aspects of a sustainable design is to source materials that are ethically made and carbon neutral. The same can be said in the fashion industry for their recent public scrutiny on unethical and unregulated sourcing practices. Fair labor practices is one aspect of this, and another huge one would be the energy consumed in obtaining and processing materials to be used for the clothing. It's important that we as designers, clients, and customers understand the importance of materials and to choose sustainable and eco-friendly options. One of the most interesting commonalities between fashion and architecture is that they're both heavily influenced by history and culture. In architecture, designers usually look towards the past for inspiration, whether it be the ornate details of Gothic architecture or the clean lines of modernist architecture. And in fashion, designers will look at historical styles and old trends for inspiration. And that could be the flowing lines of ancient Greek clothing, or it could be the sharp tailoring of the early 1920s. Japan's culture and aesthetic has had a tremendous influence on Western architecture. In the 19th and early 20th centuries, when Japan began to open up to the West, their architectural design principles became more widely admired. Japan's culture and history is very evident in their architecture, and this is what heavily inspired Frank Lloyd Wright and Mary Mahoney Griffin. 
Not only is their culture and history evident in their architecture, but it can also be found in their clothing. This is most notable in the sportwear, streetwear, and sneaker categories. Brands such as Uniqlo, Asics, Unitsuka Tiger, Gisu, Ironheart, and Momotaro are all brands that have had an influence on North America. Architecture and fashion are both really influenced by technology. In architecture, advances in technology have allowed architects to construct buildings that, in the past, would typically be impossible to construct. And the same thing is happening in fashion where advancements in technology are allowing designers to create new materials and also new types of production. This means that they can create clothing that's more durable, sustainable, and comfortable than ever before. Technology advancements in architecture have played a significant role by making housing more affordable, sustainable, and accessible. This is all done through advancements in 3D printing, prefabrication, discovery and development of better sustainable materials, solar power, and mobile apps that help with planning and designing homes before they're even built. In 2019, the Vulcan 2 printer was used to build homes in underserved areas of the world such as Tabasco, Mexico. A nonprofit named New Story used their printer to build 50 homes in Tabasco. A home could be constructed in a matter of days, and it costs approximately around $4,000. Once again, in the fashion industry, 3D printing to create shoes, mobile apps such as Marketplace to connect artisans with buyers, virtual fashion shows, and blockchain technology to create transparent supply chains in the fashion industry, these are all leading technology advancements that have elevated the fashion industry. I think the last and probably the most important connection between fashion and architecture is how they both can shape and influence the way that people experience the world. In architecture, buildings can create a sense of place and community. And that can be something like a busy city or even a peaceful nature retreat. And in fashion, clothing can help someone express their individuality and help them express their identity. That could be the colors that they choose, how they wear their clothes, and how they tend to accessorize themselves. A piece of architecture should enhance the surrounding environment through its beauty and function, as well as provide spaces that foster and enhance the occupant's experiences. Architecture, like fashion, should add value to the user and its surrounding context rather than take it away. It should make the user or wearer feel great and look great. The connections between architecture and fashion are many and varied and provide a fascinating insight into the way that humans create and express themselves. From design and materials, to culture and history, to technology and creating experiences, architecture and fashion are two industries that are intimately linked. And whether you're choosing an outfit or designing a building, these two will always continue to shape and influence each other in exciting ways. Remember to subscribe and if you like the video, please like the video. I got two more over there that I think you'll really like. Right here next to me are a list of patrons that help to support this channel. You get a lot of great benefits and it helps to cover the cost of the materials and your name gets featured at the end of the videos like these amazing people right here.